Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. And today I wanted to talk about some of the reasons why your photos might be looking a little bit boring. Maybe you feel like your photos just don't stand out or they're not unique, or maybe they just kind of look like everybody else's. I totally understand this because when I was just starting out in photography, I definitely felt like my photos weren't unique and it did take me quite a while to get to the point where my photos were standing out and they were getting a little bit more attention. So in this video, I wanna cover some of the common mistakes that photographers are making that are keeping their photos looking a little bit boring, as well as how to overcome those mistakes so you you can start capturing photos that stand out a little bit more. And real quick, before we jump into it, be sure to head to my website and download my free travel photographer's toolkit. This is a free resource guide that I put together that has a ton of useful resources, essential apps, and a detailed gear list for photographers. There's a link down in the description and I hope you guys enjoy. So one of the most common mistakes that I see a lot of beginner photographers making that I think really holds them back is relying too much on the subject matter in their photo. And don't get me wrong, subject matter is incredibly important. It has a massive impact on the story of your image and the feeling that your image gives off, which is ultimately the most important thing. But a beautiful location or a beautiful model or a beautiful subject does not necessarily equal a beautiful photo. And I think when a lot of people first pick up a camera, they think, oh, I'm gonna go to this beautiful location and I'm gonna capture cool photos there because it's a beautiful location. But there's so much more that goes into a photograph than just the subject matter involved. There's the stylistic elements of photography, the lighting, the composition, the colors, the detail. And there's also the technical side, the lens selection, your perspective in accordance to the subject, all of these factors culminate on the outcome of an image. So yes, subject matter is incredibly important, but equally so are all of these other stylistic elements as well. So next time you're out shooting in a beautiful location, don't be lazy and just rely on the location itself. Be creative, look for interesting ways to photograph that subject. Pay close attention to all the stylistic elements of photography and know that just because you're in a beautiful place doesn't mean you're gonna get a beautiful photo. And on the flip side of that, just because you're in an ugly place doesn't mean you can't capture a cool photo as well. I think it's important to remember that there are so many different aspects that go into the creation of a photo. And while subject matter is important, just because you're in a beautiful location or you have a beautiful model, you still need to be thinking about all the other artistic elements of a photograph in order to walk away with a photo that's gonna stand out and that you're proud of. Now, building off of that, like I said, subject matter is still incredibly important. And the second reason why your photos might be a bit boring is because you don't have a clear subject in your photo. And having a clear subject is super important because it really pulls the viewer into the image, it anchors your composition, and it also really helps tell the story of your photograph. If there's so many different things happening in your composition and there's no anchor point in that main subject, your viewer's eyes are gonna hunt around that frame, they're gonna get lost and they're gonna fall off and it's not gonna be a visually appealing composition. You wanna make it very clear as to what that main subject is and you wanna pull the viewer into that main subject to really grab their attention and bring them into the photo. And I think the best way to describe this is to just give you guys an example. So this is a photo that I shot in Sumba in Indonesia and it's a beautiful photo. It's this gorgeous landscape. We have a beautiful sunset with the valley off to the left but there's not really a clear subject in this image. Like where is your eye supposed to look? There's nothing really anchoring you into that composition. But what if I told you that I Photoshopped out this little town in the bottom right hand corner and by including this back in, you can see now we have an anchor point in that composition and it really gives the photo so much more purpose, so much more meaning because we have that clear subject that really anchors the composition. Now I'm not saying every photo has to have a clear subject. Of course, there's beautiful images that don't have a clear subject and they're still really pleasing and interesting to look at. But generally speaking, having that clear main subject in your photo makes a photo that's a little bit easier to look at and it has more purpose. So even something like landscape photography, where you wanna go out, you wanna capture these beautiful landscapes, utilizing subjects in those photos can really help ground that composition. And that could be something like a boat, it could be a little house off in the corner, it could be a person, which is what I like to use often because people can move around and you can position them in your composition where you want them to be to kind of create that anchor point and then help the viewer's eyes kind of navigate throughout that frame. So while this isn't the end all be all, I think a lot of photographers can benefit by being very intentional with every photo they take and focusing on a main subject 
when they're taking that image. That doesn't mean you have to place it in the middle. It doesn't mean you have to place it in the third. You just need to make sure it's very clear as to what you're photographing and what that main subject is in your frame. And the third reason why your photos might look a little bit boring is a lack of depth. And depth is everything in photography. It really helps guide the viewer's eyes from the front of the frame to the back of the frame. It gives you context in the scene and it just adds so much visual interest that not only helps with storytelling, but also just helps capture an image that's strikingly more beautiful than an image that's flat. Now, of course, not every photo has to have depth, right? Photography is situational and there's gonna be scenes that you shoot that are not gonna have depth in them. But generally speaking, having depth in our image just adds so much more visual interest. And if you're out shooting and you wanna add depth into your scene, one of the things you can do is step back and find something close to you to use as a foreground element in your scene. That will really help add a ton of depth into your scene. And also it can help frame your subject as well. Now, if there's nothing around you that you can use to add that depth into your scene, you can always lower yourself down to the ground and include the ground as a foreground element. Just having that one foreground element in the front of your scene can add so much depth into your image. And you don't need to be capturing a foreground, a midground, and a background in every single image. But if you can do that, your image is gonna be much more interesting. And another way to add depth into your photos is by utilizing leading lines. And leading lines are lines that guide your viewer's eyes from the front of the frame to the back of the frame. And these are just so visually interesting. They add so much depth into your scene and they also help highlight your main subject because your viewer's eyes can really easily just follow that line onto your main subject. And when I'm out shooting, besides looking for beautiful subjects and besides looking for beautiful light, I am almost always looking for these leading lines to really help add depth into my photo and create a more visually interesting image. Now, another way to add depth into your photo is by opening up your aperture. So if you're shooting at an aperture of f1.8, you're gonna have a much shallower depth of field in your image, and it's gonna help separate your subject from the background. But you need to be careful with this because if you capture a photo and the depth of field is too shallow, there's actually no depth at all. There's just your subject and you're completely obliterating the background behind and you're actually reducing that depth even though your depth of field is so shallow. And don't get me wrong, I used to do this all the time. When I got my first prime lens, I shot everything at f1.4. I completely blew out the background because it just looked so cool having my subject in focus and everything out of focus. So when you get your first prime lens and it can open up to f1.8, don't take the easy way out and just completely obliterate the background. Choose an aperture that's gonna show that depth in that scene. It's gonna show your subject in their environment. That's gonna be much more interesting than completely obliterating the background behind your subject. Now, reason number four is your photos are a little bit too polished. They're a little bit too perfect. And this is something that I've noticed recently and it's 100% subjective, but photos that are a little bit more raw and they have imperfections are actually standing out a little bit more now than photos that are just perfectly sharp and rich in color and everything is perfect. And I think the reason for this is because as photography technology has gotten better and better, it's always been this massive push towards realism, you know, capturing the sharpest photos possible, having the richest colors possible, and just having everything look, almost look more real than real life. And I think this has gotten stale in a way, and photos that are standing out now really embody the imperfections of photography. And I think that's why film photography is doing so well right now, is because it's not perfect. It has grain in it. It's using old lenses and there's lens flares, and maybe the exposure's off a little bit. And I think these imperfections really help tell the story of that photo. So not every photo has to be this perfectly edited, super sharp, rich in color masterpiece. Don't be afraid to let your creativity shine and do something a little bit different with your edit. Add noise grain into your photo in Lightroom or underexpose your image if you think that's gonna help tell the story of your photo. Or do what I like to do by adding dust and scratch overlays over my images in Photoshop. This is super easy to do. You just drag and drop them in, you adjust the opacity, and you have an image that has a lot more character than an image that's just perfectly sharp, has the perfect level of contrast, and almost looks more real than real life. And speaking of dust overlays, one of the best places to download these is the sponsor of today's video, Motion Array. How many times have you purchased a creative asset like a LUT pack or an overlay pack only to find that they don't perfectly suit your needs? Definitely more than once for me. But ever since I started using Motion Array, I no longer have this issue because instead of buying assets one at a time and just hoping that they're gonna work out, Motion Array gives you unlimited creative downloads for an affordable monthly subscription. Whether you're after LUTs to color grade your videos, royalty-free music, stock photos and videos, or sound effects to help spice up your project. Motion Array has everything you need for your creative projects in one place. And recently, Motion Array teamed up with Madrid-based illustrator and designer David Milan to create the Set It Off Template Collection, a series of colorful, fun, and eye-catching hand-drawn templates designed to make your videos pop. 
Now these are exclusive to Motion Array and they're some of the highest quality motion graphics templates that I've seen online. Plus they're super easy to use. Simply just drag and drop them into your timeline and your video is 10 times more engaging. Now Motion Array also just added 50 new plugins compatible with all major video editing softwares to help power your edits with many more on the way. So click the first link in the description to get the Set It Off template collection, as well as the thousands of other high quality creative assets that Motion Array has available and start leveling up your creative projects today. Thank you so much Motion Array for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. Now, the next reason why your photos might be looking a little bit boring is because you're not taking the time to plan out your shoots. Now, this is very much dependent on the style of photography that you're after. For example, with street photography, you're not gonna be doing all that much planning because a lot of it is serendipitous. You're gonna be capturing things that just show up that you just stumble upon while you're out shooting on the street. But something like landscape photography, where 90% of landscape photography is being at the right place at the right time, you need to make sure that you're planning out those trips to make sure that you're there to capture that photo at the best time possible so you can get the best weather, the best conditions, and the best light as well. But where I notice this the most is actually with portrait photography. A lot of photographers think that if they have a beautiful model and they have a beautiful location, they're gonna be able to capture some cool photos there. But there are so many other aspects that go into a portrait shoot. For example, the clothing that the model is wearing, the time of day that you're shooting in that specific location. Is it gonna be busy if you go there at this time? Is the light gonna be nice at this time? There's a lot of different aspects that go into a portrait shoot and you wanna make sure that you're planning out all of those aspects, making sure that your model is wearing something that's appropriate for that specific location and also doing a little bit of research on poses that you can instruct your model to do while you're out shooting. So when you're putting together something like a portrait shoot, make sure you really sit down and plan exactly what you want those photos to look like or at least have an idea of the overall vibe that you want to capture in that shoot. If you're not taking the time to plan out these shoots, you might be coming away with photos that are a little bit boring, but if you do take the time and energy to really plan out those shoots, you're already doing so much more than what a lot of other photographers are doing, and that's gonna put you in a much better situation to capture photos that stand out a little bit more. But this leads me onto my last mistake and that's going into a shoot with too much bias. So I just said planning is super important and it is important. We need to make sure we're at the right place at the right time and that we're prepared to capture the photos that we want to capture. But if you plan too much and you go into a shoot with all of these ideas in your mind, sometimes it's enough to actually hold you back creatively. And you always have to be able to pivot when you're on location because if things don't go to plan, you have to be able to be creative and capture something even even when it's not perfect. And on top of that, if you go out shooting and you have these very clear compositions in your mind, you're really gonna be holding yourself back creatively from finding different compositions in that specific location. For example, with landscape photography, it's really easy to find really cool landscape photography locations based on other photos that you've seen online. But once you look at that location, you'll realize that all the photographers are shooting the same composition of that specific location. So if you do see all of those same photos, just look at one and ignore the rest of them. And when you get to that location, look for a different composition while you're there. Don't get pigeonholed on this specific composition that everybody else is taking. Some of my favorite photos are photos that I've captured in places that are incredibly popular and everyone shoots them the same way. But I went in with a fresh mind looking for something a little bit different, trying to get rid of that bias in my mind. And a good example of this is a photo that I shot in Nusa Lembongin in 2020 with my friend Kelsey. We went to this absolutely beautiful beautiful location where the beach acts as a leading line up to Mount Agung in the back on Bali. Bali is the other island right next to Nusa Lembongin. And all the images that I had seen were taken up on the cliff above that where you can see this leading line guiding into that volcano, but I didn't wanna shoot the same composition. I knew that there had to be another way to shoot the scene. So me and Kelsey went down into the water, we explored a little bit and I captured this photo, which is completely different from those other photos, but it still has that same feeling of that location, that beautiful beach acting as a leading line up to this mountain in the back. So when you're planning out your shoots, yes, take a look at some of the other photos from that specific location, but don't go into those situations only trying to capture those specific compositions, trust your creativity, look for different things to shoot, 
I promise you're gonna find something unique that nobody else has shot before. And your photo is gonna stand out so much more because it doesn't look like everybody else's of that same composition. But those are all the most common mistakes that I see a lot of beginner photographers making that's really preventing their work from standing out amongst all the other images online. Be aware of these mistakes while you're out shooting, but also just know that you're going to continue making mistakes and that's part of the process. As long as you continue shooting, you're gonna keep getting better. Your photos are gonna improve over time and I promise your photos are gonna become less boring as time goes on. But that is all for this video, guys. And once again, be sure to check out my Travel Photographer's Toolkit and also thank you so much, Motion Array, for sponsoring this video. I will chat with you guys again very soon and I'll see you in the next one.